Okay, we well open up your Bibles to First John chapter five. <clears throat> Okay, let's bow in prayer before we start. <clears throat> Holy Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for spiritual protection you give us, physical protection. We pray that you have mercy, Father, as the word goes forth, that comfort our hearts and that we may grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you give the increase. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of God unto us. We thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy, that we can escape the lake of fire through the blood of our Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> First John chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For who whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. <clears throat> and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he test, hath testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record <clears throat> that God gave that God hath given to us eternal life. And this is this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath the life, and he that hath not the son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. <clears throat> and if we keep, and if we know that, uh, know that he hear us, whatso whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we had desired of him. If any man see his brother sin, the sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he may pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. We know that <clears throat> whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. <clears throat> And we know that the Son of God has come and have given us understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. <clears throat> okay, flip over to uh, <clears throat> Revelation 4. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, we're we're looking at uh, verse seven today. <clears throat> and uh, last week we seen that that sea of glass is a picture of 
the body of believers. Uh, remember, the Bible teaches the wicked are like the troubled sea. And when it's a sea of glass, it's calm, it's at peace. And that's Christ in us. Uh, Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. And so um, the sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, uh, the end of verse six there, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to focus on these four beasts. Um, and we've seen that the full of eyes uh, mean means that, that the gospel or the light of the gospel comes from uh, these uh, from God, which is a picture of these four beasts. Say, uh, and we went to Luke eleven, where it says, "If your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light." And so, of course, God is light. Say, now in Revelation four seven, it says, "And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf." The third beast had a face of a man as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to look at all these: uh, uh, the lion, the calf, the face of a man, and an eagle. Which we're going to see they're all characteristics of God or the Lord or the Lord Jesus Christ. And this this word "beast" in the Greek it means a live animal. And remember, this is figurative language, okay? Uh, you have to look at this. You're not going to look at uh, verse 6 and say the four beasts full of eyes, and, and, and you're going to look at a literal beast with eyes all over them. Uh, you have to look at this, understand why four beasts, why, what does the full of eyes mean, spiritually say? And so... <clears throat> God uses number four in the Bible as, as the, takes in the earth or the world, the universe. And um, let me just show you how uh, the four is used. Go to Matthew 24. Look at verse 31 there. <clears throat> Matthew 24 <clears throat> and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. See? So four would point to uh, the, the earth, uh, the world. And, and we're going to see, um, uh, well, let's look at one more. Go to Acts chapter 10. Look at verse 11 there. Acts chapter 10, look at verse 11. <clears throat> I saw heaven that saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descended unto, unto him as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Okay, so four corners uh takes in uh this earth this world and we're going to see that that god uh the four beast um would imply god uh the lord of this earth um if you go to psalms 24 or um uh, yeah 24 look at verse one there <clears throat> psalms 24 look at verse one the earth is the lord's in the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein see and so by saying four beast uh would take in the earth and the world see that god the earth is the lord's and the fullness of the world see so we're right on track how god uses the number four it, it would point to this earth this world so uh god uh, we're going to see that this is a picture of salvation uh that the lord came and is bringing salvation to this earth to his elect 
And, um, and so we have the number four, four beast. Now he could have put some other number there, of course, but he uses the number four, see? And so, <clears throat> so we're gonna see that the first beast was like a lion. I want us to go over to um, Ezekiel one, because this is where <clears throat> you're gonna find this language, okay? In Ezekiel one. <clears throat> And you're going to see there that in verse one, <clears throat> Ezekiel says, I saw visions of God. Look at uh, Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1. Now came to pass in the 30th year, in the uh, fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives of the river Jebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God see and so he's going to just dis ex describe <clears throat> the, all this language after these verses here of the visions of god now uh, look at verse five even though it says four living creatures it's the same teaching whether it says in revelation um uh four beast see it's the same it's the same teaching here so look at look at ezekiel 1 verse 5 uh and so also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures remember this is the this is god the visions of god all this language and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings and there were uh, there were straight and their feet were straight and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they had sparkled like the color of burnished brass and they had the hands of a man under their wings and on their four sides and they had four uh, they four had their faces in their wings and their wings were joined one to another and they turned not when they went, they went everyone straight forward. Now, remember, Jesus says straight is the gate. And, uh, and of course, God is the way, the truth, and the life, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're going to read verses about straight because that's the gospel. And so verse 10, and as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, <clears throat> the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face <clears throat> of an ox on the left side, and they four had the face of an eagle. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, but when we read Revelation, we have uh, a lion, a calf, a man, and a flying eagle. See, so God. Uh, uh, God's desire was to put th those words in Revelation, <clears throat> and we see the same thing. Uh, we have man in verse 5, we have a calf in verse 7, uh, a lion in verse 10, and also uh, an eagle in, at the end of verse 10, see? And so um, this, these are characteristics of God. So we we need to zoom in and find out uh what's a, uh, a lion a picture of and what is a calf a picture of a man a picture of and what the eagle is a picture of see and then it, we're going to see how it all applies to the lord jesus and notice verse 12 ezekiel 1 and they went everyone straight forward see so you're going to find out that uh, you know this word straight uh it's the gospel jesus uh, uh enter in by the straight gate see and that means christ enter in through the lord jesus the gospel and um <clears throat> and then of course look at verse 13 as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps and it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. A lot of this we already looked at in Revelation. 
And that's, of course, is the gospel, the light of the gospel. When you see fire and lamps and uh, uh, bright and lightning, it's the gospel that comes forth from God, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? <clears throat> Go over to Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter <clears throat> 10. Look at Ezekiel chapter 10. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to read uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read look at verse um, 13 and 14 Ezekiel 10 as for the wheels uh, which is a picture of God it was because it's also in chapter one uh, as for the wheels it was it, it was cried out to them in my hearing O wheel and everyone had four faces the first face was the face of a cherub the second face was a face of a man the third face uh and the third the face of a lion and the fourth the face of an eagle and the cherubims were lifted up this is the living creature that i saw by the river jebar see and in other words in chapter one He's he's saying this is the this is God the vision of God that I saw see and if you go back to Ezekiel one <clears throat> it even says in the very last verse uh, verse twenty eight as the appearance of a bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so is the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice, one that spake. Okay, so all of Ezekiel 1 there ties into visions of God. <clears throat> okay, it, it, there's a, all this figurative language about the living beast or the, um, uh, the eagle and the man and the lion, uh, all <clears throat> are pictures and types of, of the characteristics of God. So let's uh, look at the first one, uh, lion. <clears throat> it says in Revelation, the first beast was like a lion. <clears throat> okay. And we see that in verse 10 in Ezekiel 1. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion. So you have lion in there. And, <clears throat> and I want us to go to Proverbs. 19. Look at verse 12 there. <clears throat> Proverbs 19, look at verse 12. The king's wrath. Now, the king would be a, the Lord Jesus Christ. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but is but his favor which would be the king's favor or christ is as dew <clears throat> upon the grass the dew is the word of god and of course the grass would be believers see okay but the king's wrath is as a roaring of a lion so a lion <clears throat> takes in the wrath of god and um, look at chapter 20 <clears throat> of uh, proverbs look at verse 2 the fear of a king is as a roaring of a lion who so provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul so you have a you have a picture there of um again god's wrath and his his anger uh, and his judgment that um, that the lion is a picture of also in Proverbs 28 <clears throat> look at verse 1 there 28 1 the wicked flee when no man pursueth but the righteous are bold as a lion see and of course Christ is righteous and he's bold as a lion so uh, so far, we're seeing that the lion uh, implies boldness, uh, God's wrath or judgment. Look at Proverbs chapter 30. Look at 
look at verse 30 there. <clears throat> A lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. Okay. So the lion would uh would be a picture of God's strength, his his uh that he's king, say strongest among beasts, he's the king among the beasts. And so a lion would take in <clears throat> attributes of Christ, his his uh God, his strength. Um, he's king. Um, he's uh, Lord, King of Kings. The Bible says, and Lord of Lords. Um, he's a God of, of of wrath, and so forth. Uh, go to Revelation chapter five. It even says about the lion uh, that Jesus. Um, look at verse chapter five. Look at verse five there. <clears throat> And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So that's Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. See? So here he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. See? And so again, um, uh, we have a picture of uh, Christ. One more in Revelation. Go to uh, Revelation 19. <clears throat> Look at 16 there. <clears throat> and he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, so uh, the first piece, God himself, or a picture of Christ, is like a lion. And we're seeing that the lion uh, as we looked at these verses, is the strongest among the beast, and that uh, he's king, and that he's a god of wrath, you see. And so this takes in all the characteristics of, of the Lord Jesus Christ um, as a lion, okay? Now, the second one is a calf, okay? And, and if you go back to Ezekiel again, uh, Ezekiel chapter one, <clears throat> I'll show you where, where it says calf. Look at verse seven there, Ezekiel one. <clears throat> and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. All right, so uh, of course, uh, as we work with this, the calf, is is uh, tied into the of course the cross or the sacrifice of uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, and so go to um, Genesis chapter eighteen. <clears throat> Look at verse seven and eight there. Genesis seventeen, or uh, Genesis um, eighteen seven and eight. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened, hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. Now the them is the Lord. If you look at uh, verse 1, the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of the door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. See? So you really have a picture of God, the Godhead here. So when it says, they did eat, that's the three men. That's the Lord that appeared to Abraham. And what did they eat? They ate this calf. And the calf is the gospel. And uh, this is what we eat. Jesus says, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has everlasting life. And so the calf is a picture of the sacrifice or the, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the calf uh, is the sacrifice and all this other language, the butter and milk ties into the gospel. And then it says at the end of verse eight, uh, they did eat. 
that's the Lord, the three men, see? They took in, and we take in the gospel as they eat, they eat the calf, see? Which is also a picture of the gospel. Look at Leviticus 9, 1 and 2. Leviticus 9, look at 1 and 2 there. It came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, take thee a young calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. Okay, so we're right on track that the calf as a sin offering, which is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our sin offering. And do you see now, as, as this, uh, we're developing the, these four beasts, that it, these are uh, characteristic attributes of, of God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a lion. He's the king of kings. Uh, he's, str he's strong. And um, he's a god of judgment. And then we have uh, the calf, which points to the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ, our sacrifice, see? And go to Luke 15 now. I want to show you one more about a calf. <clears throat> Look at chapter 15. Look at verse 24 and 27. <clears throat> okay, Ezekiel 5, or uh, excuse me, Luke 15, 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And then verse 27, and he said unto him, thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Of course, that fatted calf really ties into the cross, Christ himself. That would be the gospel, see? Remember, Christ was killed and was uh, uh, put to death and was buried and raised again on the third day. This is the gospel, see? Uh, I'll show you in 1 Corinthians 15 where it says that. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Look at the, look at <clears throat> verse, um, uh, start with verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. And I just want to uh, you know, touch on that real quick. Keep in memory what, don't, don't forget the Lord. Israel, the Bible says Israel forgot God. Um, you remember they were lukewarm and, and living in this world, which is, uh, it's very distracting. Uh, you, you don't, you don't want to forget God. See, keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? So that's the gospel, the calf, that he, he was killed for their sin offering, it said back in Leviticus. And so um, uh, we're seeing here now, so far the first beast uh, was like a lion, which is the, the, the um, uh, king, Christ is king of kings, he's strong, and he's a, he's a God of judgment and wrath, as we read those verses in Proverbs. Then it says, the second is like a calf, which points to the gospel, the cross, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sin offering. Now it says, and uh, the third beast is a face of a man, okay? And so I want us to go to John 1 and 1 there. <clears throat> of course, God became man. Um, the Bible teaches this. 
I want to show you in the in the scriptures here, God became man. Look at um, um, John 1 and 1 and then verse 14. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So the word equals God. It says it right there. The word was God or God was the word, say, either way, the word was God, and look at verse, verse 14, and the word was made flesh, see, so we know that the word was God, and God was made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when you look at when you look at this verse, you could see that in verse one, the word was God, see, uh, and then it became flesh. He became man. See, look at Matthew one, look at verse 23 there. Matthew 1 23. <clears throat> Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See? God with us. And so God taking the form of man. Um, uh, just a few more. Look at Romans 8 and look at verse 3. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 3 there. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Remember, uh, the word was God and the word became flesh. God became flesh. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Say there's the calf that was in uh, uh, one of the four beasts, okay? And uh, the last one's Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Philippians, look at Philippians 2, <clears throat> 7, 8, 9, Philippians 2. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So you have a man here, the face of a man. You have the calf. Uh, wherefore God also highly exalted uh, him and given him a name which is above every name. Okay. So you see how. It's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the man, the face of a man, okay? And so that's that's uh, uh, God becoming flesh, okay? And remember in Ezekiel, it says in verse 5, and this was their appearance, they had the likeness of a man. So, <clears throat> so far we covered the lion, the calf, uh, the man, and the last one now, is a flying eagle uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 4. See, it says, uh, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. What does that mean? Uh, and so, uh, again, it has, it's going to tie in to the, the um, characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is, and, and we're seeing all these, these things here, the lion, the calf, the man. Uh, all pointing to uh, the the work of the Lord Jesus, his attributes, his characteristics, okay? And so, so far the lion, king uh, of the beast, strong, uh, God of wrath, as it says in Proverbs. Um, and, uh, and then uh, he's the lion from the tribe of Judah. The calf uh, is the sin offering, as it says, and uh, and Leviticus, uh, the cross, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, and the face of a man, how 
uh, the word was uh, in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and this is the face of a man say God became man uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle okay and I just want to show you um, <clears throat> uh, Exodus chapter 9 19, 19 verse 4 Exodus 19, look at verse 4. <clears throat> you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Okay? So eagles' wings would, would be salvation, a picture of salvation how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. See, if the Lord brings you unto himself, you're saved. That's salvation. So eagle's wings would be a picture of salvation. Look at um, Revelation 12 and look at verse 14 there. <clears throat> look at Revelation 12 and verse 14. <clears throat> And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. See, now these wings are going to be used to uh, keep her protected because it says that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And so what that's teaching this woman is is the uh, body of believers. That's uh, would be the church, uh, God's elect, uh, during the time of great tribulation, because of it says the time, times and a half a time. That's the great tribulation period. So God protects his his elect, his church, his sheep. You see, by these great these two wings of a great eagle see god that's a uh, god uh, uses that as salvation and and of course protection so uh there you have the eagle's wings you, you look at this uh what's the spiritual picture here see you, you this is the this is what's teaching the great eagle uh christ is the, is that great eagle that that uh that saves us see and so uh and protects us to two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness okay and to her place uh, where's her place it's in God, uh, god's kingdom in christ see and that's where we're nourished where she is nourished for a time times and a half a time so during the great tribulation god will protect his people they'll be nourished with the word of god with the true gospel see uh whoever they are in this world they're going to be nourished okay so go back to revelation uh it's one thing uh, as i said before to read uh you know revelation but also to you know to have understanding of these words um uh, and and uh you see and and this is what the holy spirit does it reveals these things. So to sum up verse 7, Revelation 4, 7, the first beast was like a lion, a picture of Christ, his boldness. Remember, it says bold as the righteous are bold as a lion. Uh, Christ is bold. He's king of kings. Uh, he's strong. He's, uh, he's a God of wrath. See, uh, the second beast is like a calf. It points to the, the cross, the sacrifice. The calf was a sin offering, it says in Leviticus. And, um, and so that calf points to uh, the work of Christ on the cross. The third beast had a face of a man where God became man. The Lord Jesus became uh, flesh. It's, I've read you those verses that go with that, see? And then the fourth beast was like a flying eagle that in Christ, uh, in God, in the Lord Jesus, we have salvation. 
he provides salvation by saying a flying eagle. And so we looked at um, uh, Exodus um, 19, verse 4, that really uh, ties into how he bare us on eagle's wings and brought brought us to himself, see? And so uh, uh, in this verse, you have all the pictures of God himself. And, and uh, this is the four beasts, see? In verse 6, at the end of verse 6, this would be God. Uh, the why for? Because uh, God provides salvation to all those on this earth or in this world. See, He's the God of He is the God of salvation. He's the uh, He provides salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, which ties into the lion, the calf, the man, and the, and the flying eagle. See, so four beasts would imply this earth or this world where, of course, uh, the Bible teaches that uh, Christ came to, uh, into this world uh, to save those, uh, see, whom he has, uh, those that are lost. And so um, let's see if we have time. We'll, we'll start uh, verse uh, 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. Okay. And so... Um, Remember that uh, now you have um, another number here that, that goes with the 24 elders because four beasts each had six wings. So it's, it's 24, uh, four times uh, six. And so uh, you have the number 24 in here, which would be the fullness of God's salvation because these wings, <clears throat> you see, are uh, tie into salvation. Um, even though it says in seven, uh, the beast was like a flying eagle, but God gives us information, uh, more information in Exodus 19, by, I want to read it again, by saying, um, verse four, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. So, the wings would imply salvation. So the fullness, this would be the fullness of God's salvation by four beasts had each of them six wings about him, see? And, and so uh, let the Bible be its own interpreter on wings. And it says in Exodus that it says right there, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. So the wings would point to salvation. So it'd be the fullness of God's salvation by saying uh, 24 wings, or the four beasts had each of them six wings, and so there's 24 about him. So by saying 24 and by saying wings, we could see the spiritual teaching it's saying the fullness of God's salvation because it's 24 and it's wings and the wings uh, point to salvation, see? And so um, it says six wings about him. So <clears throat> do you understand that? Uh, this, is, this is the spiritual teaching that comes from this, see? And this is why you have to uh, compare spiritual with spiritual. You can't look at these things literally and say there's these four beasts have eyes all over them and and uh it's it's uh, that's not how you rightly divide the word you look at these words and get uh that ties into christ or the gospel say and that's what's going that we're doing here and so the four beasts god himself had each of them six wings about him fullness of the gospel fullness of salvation that come from the four beasts from Christ. And they, these four beasts, were full of eyes. It's, it goes right with verse 6, at the end of verse 6. The four beasts full of eyes. It's the same exact teaching as verse the end of verse 6. So, so when it says, the six wings about him, they were full of eyes within. See? Now, that would be teaching, uh, they were full of the light of the gospel. 
see full of the eyes within and and the, if your eye is clear your whole body is full of light and luke in the book of luke it says that uh, verse around verse 34 and so uh by saying uh full of eyes within it's saying that god is full of light the light of the gospel okay and and we know that um go to uh first john for a moment Look at verse uh, chap chapter five. Or, uh, <clears throat> uh, chapter. I'm going to go to chapter um, one, verse five. First John chapter one. Look at verse five there. And this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. See, God is full of eyes. God is light. It, 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 that's, that's how we understand the full of eyes. The eye is clear. Your whole body is full of light. See, let, so let's read that verse 11, uh, Luke 11, and so you can understand uh, the language of the Bible. Look at Luke 11. Look at verse 34 there. Light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, that, that Greek word, it means clear. If thy eye is clear, thy whole body also is full of light. So if it says that in Revelation, and when it says uh, the four beasts full of eyes before and behind, well, spiritually, we we say if your eye is clear, the whole body also is full of light. Full, can, can you see that? Full of eyes, full of light. It goes hand in hand. And so God is full of light, full of the gospel, the light of the gospel. And I just read in first john that god is light see and and so that's how you would understand that language when it says full of eyes it's saying that god is the light of the gospel jesus says i am the light of the world see and so uh these four beasts would be a picture of god himself the lord jesus christ uh and back in verse eight uh chapter four verse eight the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and in other words the god is full of the light of the gospel god is light see and and of course just flip over to john chapter one look at look at how it says light over there about the lord jesus uh full of eyes, if you will. Look at John 1, chapter 1. All right, look at, uh, let's see, 7. Let's start with verse 7. Well, let's start with verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man that was sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, full of eyes, see, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, that was John the Baptist, but was sent to bear witness of that light, the Lord Jesus Christ, see. And so uh, this is why uh anybody that becomes saved because it says right there uh the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not see unsaved man they're blinded and the lord has to open up our spiritual eyes to be saved see and that's how uh you and i are born of god god saves us through the light 
of the gospel, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, full of eyes, light of the gospel, okay? So uh, let that sink into your ears. That's, that's the teaching of these, this language, full of light. Christ is the light of the gospel. He's full of light. He's full of eyes, okay? Same uh, teaching there. Okay, so next, Lord willing, next week we're going to finish up on, on this verse 8 where it says, uh, they rest night and day saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So we'll pick that up next week.